Today we have this really cool integral. It's the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the inverse tangent of 2 times sine x divided by sine x. And we're going to evaluate this using my favorite integration technique, Feynman's trick, aka the coolest way to integrate. And the result is going to be pretty damn beautiful. So for reference purposes, let's call the integral we have i. And we need to define an integral function i of some parameter, let's call it a. And we define the integral function as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the inverse tangent of a times sine x divided by sine x dx. So our target case is that of i of 2. That will give us the target integral i. So the plan here is to differentiate the integral function with respect to the parameter a. And the question here is whether we can switch up the order of the differentiation and the integration operators. Well, we have the inverse tangent function, which is, of course, a bounded function. And we have the reciprocal of sine x, which is, of course, the cosecant of x. And this is decreasing on the interval between 0 and pi by 2. So we have a bounded function times a decreasing function. So by Dirichlet's theorem, the integral does converge and the switch up is justified. So we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2. And because of the Leibniz rule, this total derivative becomes a partial one. We're differentiating now partially with respect to a, the inverse tangent of a times sine x divided by the sine of x, integration with respect to x. So because the x variable is a constant in the a world, we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the reciprocal of sine x times the derivative with respect to a of the inverse tangent of a times sine x, which should be 1 plus the square of the parameter, that's a squared times the squared sine of x, and because of the chain rule, we have to differentiate this with respect to a, so we're going to have sine of x, and the sine terms cancel out pretty damn nicely, and this implies that the derivative of i with respect to a has a pretty nice looking structure. It's the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 plus a squared times d squared sine of x. Now I want to convert this sine function in the denominator into a cosine. Why? Well, aesthetic reasons. I just like the way the solution works, to be honest. So here we go. Um, I'm going to perform a phase shift going from the x realm to the pi by 2 minus x realm. So in that case, I have the derivative of i with respect to a equal to the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx. Notice that I've already performed a switch up of limits to get rid of the negative sign due to the differential element. Divided by 1 plus a squared. Now we have the squared sine of pi by 2 minus x. Okay, and that, of course, is the cosine function. So we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of dx divided by 1 plus a squared times the squared cosine of x. And to evaluate this simple-looking integral, all we have to do is expand using the squared secant. Yeah, that's a nice idea. So we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the squared secant of x dx divided by 1, oh, terribly sorry about that, we have the squared secant of x plus a squared. And the squared secant is, of course, just 1 plus the squared tangent, so we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the squared secant of x dx divided by a squared plus 1 plus the squared tangent of x. And now let's make a substitution. So we're going from the x realm by taking tangent x to some other variable, call it u. And this implies that the squared secant of x dx equals du. So we already have the right structure for the differential element. And in the limit as x approaches 0, we have u approaching 0. And as x approaches pi by 2, we have u approaching positive infinity. Okay, cool. So this implies that the derivative of i with respect to a, oh, terribly sorry about that, equals an integral from 0 to infinity 
of du divided by a squared plus 1 plus u squared. Okay, this is cool. This is a very nice inverse tangent structure. So this sorts out to 1 by square root a squared plus 1 times the inverse tangent of u divided by square root a squared plus 1, with the limits being 0 and infinity. And in the limit as u goes to infinity, we have the inverse tangent going to pi by 2. And for the 0 limit, we have 0 again, so we have pi by 2 times the reciprocal, the square root of a squared plus 1. And that is the structure of the derivative of i with respect to a, completely in terms of the parameter a. And now we're at a stage to recover the integral function. So all we have to do is integrate with respect to the parameter a. So we have the integral of the derivative of i equal to pi by 2 times the integral of the reciprocal of the square root of 1 plus a squared dA. So on the left-hand side, we're left with the integral function i of a. And on the right, we have pi by 2 times this structure, which of course sorts out to the inverse sinh of a plus some constant of integration c that we have to work out. And to work this out, we have to recall the structure of the integral function. So that was defined as the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the inverse tangent of a times sine x divided by the sine of x dx. So if we plug in a equal to 0, then we have the inverse tangent of 0 and that just sorts out to zero, so the entire structure collapses and we get a zero, which is a pretty convenient piece of information to have, no doubt, because plugging in a equals zero into our equation gives us zero equal to pi by two times the inverse sinh of zero plus the constant of integration c, and this of course is zero again, which implies that c is conveniently zero. So finally, we conclude that i of a equals pi by two times the inverse sinh of a. But the target case was i of 2. i of 2 would be pi by 2 times the inverse sinh of 2. And you may be thinking, wait, okay, that's nice and all, but where's the cool stuff? I mean, you were probably expecting some exotic numbers. Well, just give me a minute. So the inverse sinh of x is defined as the natural logarithm of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. So that means the inverse sinh of 2 is the logarithm of 2 plus the square root of 5. And this argument can be expanded as 1 plus 1 plus root 5. What's so special about this expansion? Well, this term here equals twice the golden ratio phi. So this implies that i, the target integral, equals pi by 2 times the logarithm of 1 plus twice the golden ratio, which is a pretty beautiful result indeed. I think it's really cool. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.